Justice for all. Okay. <coughs> uh, I have a roll call, Barbara. Greg Trader. Here. Michelle. Here. Jeff Lewis. Here. 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 Is, uh, President. Uh, President. Could I have uh, approval for the uh, minutes from our last meeting? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Well, the first order of business tonight is something I'm very pleased to be able to uh, step aside and present, and, and that is a historical preservation award that was just uh, bestowed on the McKay School, uh, which is lo located off just off of Chichester Avenue on McKay. Uh, it's the old schoolhouse. It was re, re uh, vitalized, refurbished, uh, put back together, re repurposed. Cindy Charney is going to say a few words about that. So, Cindy, if you will. Thank you, Charlie. So um, as uh, Charlie mentioned, the school's located at Chai and McKay Avenues. It's adjacent to the new Wawa uh, construction project. That site has been um, the site of a school since before 1825. The building that's there now was constructed in 1867. And it was uh, built by the school directors. At the time, Upper Chichester Township had its own school district. It didn't merge with Lower Chichester, Marcus Hook, and Trainer for um, you know some years into the future. But the school board, the school directors paid for the first floor of the building at a cost of about $2,500. The second floor was actually paid for by the residents who needed space, um, you know, for a community room for public use and a Sunday school, believe it or not. They uh, held the Sunday school in the McKay Avenue school also. Um, so we continued to use the building as a school until 1970 when the Hilltop School opened and um, they closed the McKay Avenue School permanently and sold it to private owners. Prior to the sale of the school to Wawa and the Fiorelli family, it was empty for about 10 years. It was in extremely poor condition and it was suffering from something known as benign neglect where an owner fails to maintain a building um, and you know, there's water infiltration and you, know, you start to have serious damage to the structure. Um, so when the Historical Society met with Bob Lynn, the architect in the building, it happened to be a rainy night. And we could see how uh, clearly how bad the condition of the building was because the rain poured in through the roof. And when I say poured in, it literally poured in as though it was running uh, down a gutter. Um, and, and Bob has said that this, this building was on its last legs. It's one of the worst that he's had to deal with. And he said that if it had waited much longer, it probably could not have been um, rehabilitated. So um, in, in terms of uh, historic preservation, the terminology that is associated with this project is that it was a rehabilitation and an adaptive reuse project. That means that the goal of the project uh, wasn't to restore it as a school again, as it was originally built, but to reuse the building for another purpose. And in this case, as a commercial office building, it now houses a nationwide insurance agency. And um, in terms of the rehabilitation, the changes to the building that are made are to accommodate its new use. So you're not going to walk into a building that looks like an old schoolhouse. You're going to walk in and it's going to look like what it is, an office um, environment. Um, and so not only is adaptive reuse a way to preserve historic resources, you know, which is something I care about, it also adds character to the community and it recycles 
an existing building. So it's environmentally friendly. Rather than demolishing a building and sending the debris to a landfill, we reuse the building and um, preserve the materials as well. Um, in addition to my role on the Historical Society, I'm also the vice chair of the Heritage Commission of Delaware County. And working with Bob Lynn, we nominated the Schoolhouse Project for a preservation award in 2021 for the work that was done in 2020. Um, those awards are um, issued by the Heritage Commission and by Delaware County Council. The commission is appointed by the council, and so we do this um, jointly. And I was very happy that the uh, nomination was unanimously approved by the 11 member commission. And on May 15th, uh, the award ceremony was held. The owners, the Fiorelli family, the developer, uh, Pravto Pineville, and Bob Lynn, the architect, were at the award ceremony, as well as Barb. Thank you for attending, Barb. Um, on behalf of the township, and they accepted the, an award for site preservation. Um, and so in finishing up, I just wanna say this project is really a great example of adaptive reuse and how it benefits the township and the community in the planning and development process. So in order for the Fiorellis um, to sell the nationwide agency building, to the Wawa developer meant they needed to have a new location, a new building. And since Upper Chichester Township has a historic demolition delay ordinance, and it's likely that any um, suggestion to tear down the McKay Avenue school would have been met with resistance, this was a win-win for everybody. They, uh, you know, the, the nationwide agency is in a relatively new building, you know, a completely uh, renovated, and Wawa gained the space it needed to bring um, a larger uh, convenience store and gas station to the township. Um, you know, and personally, it's very rewarding for me to see the building still there and um, open for business being used again, uh, rather than an eyesore on the corner. So um, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has about the process, the award, or anything along those lines. Um, but thanks for letting me talk about it, too. I can't hear anything. I'm sorry. I forgot to put the mic back on. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that presentation, Cindy. And I have a bunch of pictures that were uh, showing the building as it was being rehabilitated and the condition it was in. I'm going to pass them around to people at the table can see them. Uh, and I guess they can be made available if somebody else wants to see them at some point. Right. But uh, I was just in the building the other day and it, it is as you speak, Cindy. It literally is an office building, and that's what it resembles. And the only time when you're in the building itself, uh, the extra high ceilings that are still there, and the exterior walls that you can see that are painted over that are brick, et cetera, that they, re that they retained and, and, and restored uh, gives it some character. But other than that, it looks like a brand new 2021 office building. So it's a beautiful job inside great, and out. Yep, it was a great job. Uh, we'll pass those around here and you can take a peek at them. And you can see this building was, it was heading down the tubes. You know, it looks like something that belongs on TV with the uh, old house or something like that. Where it was <laughs> apartment. Anyway, uh, next report I'd like to hear from uh, Joe Shaw. You have an update on, on the Heart and Soul. Yeah, so Heart and Soul has their first summit coming up. It's going to be at the Booth um, Wind Firehouse. And they are going to be going over their three value statements. They're looking for community input um, to comment on the three value statements. And that's going to be on June 17th, from 4 to 8. And also during that session is going to be, um, they're going to be talking about the Boothwin Town Center vision plan as well. Um, so a lot of information at that, uh, if anyone wants to come to it. And we've got some flyers. I think everyone here has a flyer. Um, so and there'll be refreshments as well.
Charlie, I think you're still muted. Call in number for public comment is 157-174-84021. That one more time, public comment call in number is 157-174-84021. All right, hearing no public comments, what I'd like to do is uh, a motion to adjourn. Great. Motion to adjourn, second, all in favor? All right, meeting is adjourned. We're going to dismiss to a training session.